What did I do last year? Oh boy. Well, my pandemic project of launching one man, one camera kept me busy having three, six, nine, twelve, thirty. Yeah, thirty projects in the can so far. Some, literally. To save time, I made this short film, All the Pretty Things, which featured a dozen brands, all in one action-packed five-minute festival film. I call it advertising multitasking. I mean, all those episodes of Workaholics aren't going to watch themselves. One of the products was an ultra-rare quarter-of-a-million-dollar bike. I mean, the real 750s are what? 200,000? Yeah, oh, way more. Which I did a separate doc on because this guy's story was mind-blowing. Would you die for your bike, Keith? Would I die for my bike? Oh... I would take a beat down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Keith. I feel the same way about my cameras. I woke up to do a little TikTok tricky piece for BuzzFeed, which was fun, and then got freaky with Freak Mount by hanging babies, filming strippers, juggalo scientists, and armchair jet dudes. It's a quality product. There were, of course, things with wheels, like this launch I did for Indian's new FTR bike, a quick edit from my Honda friends with their new line of ATVs, and a quick piece for Wolverine Cinema Digitizer. I mean, it... It's kind of a wheel, not deal with it. I got into the real estate game with Airbnb. One of the films was featured on Condé Nast's best Airbnb in LA. Well, there goes my friends and family raid. And I got very coochie coochie coo as I helped launch the new Ray-Ban stories with Facebook. And if we're dropping names, I did a big project with Netflix, which I would love to talk about, but I'm under NDA, so yeah. Last year, I'm sure we all nurtured an unhealthy relationship with food and booze, so I started a new series about home bars. I mean, shelter in place never looked so good. I did a quick jam for Absolute, where COVID was just a dream, then developed a show for the History Channel that explored the fascinating history about booze in America. It had it all, stop motion, fanciful animation, hardcore gotcha journalism, and this guy who's been training to be the Bourdain of booze his whole entire life. I knew all that drinking in college would pay off, Mom. Non-alcoholic, but just as addictive, I did a romantic branded doc for La Colombe Coffee, featuring chef Tim Hollingsworth of Odium and his signature blend of coffee. They gave me a crate of it, and then I had the edit done in about 23 minutes. Hashtag life hack, hashtag roast and render, hashtag caffeine cutting. Crashing hard, I did a few tasty films for Tasty, like this Brie and but Butter. Oh, oh man. Well, that was good. This one got flagged a few times on TikTok, no cap. I put my laughing cap on for Sweetfin, getting very serious about their new bento box like it was a Mercedes commercial circa 2004, all tuna interior. Mm. And then I brought it back to the boot with a few Italian-inspired films for Butter Pat Cast Iron. This is one job I didn't mind retakes. Finally, my torrid romance with Allen Brothers boiled over as we completed 13 heritage recipes with chef Olivia Racino. No one told me in college that I'd have to eat ribeye, roasted bone marrow tordelli, and wagyu beef cheek risotto for work. If they would've, I would've got better grades. Putting on my dancing shoes, I did a very surreal music video for Joseph the Spouse, and got smoke in my eyes with French rap group Kame House out in the desert. It was hot. Quick random break, I was accepted into the Explorers Club, which is like Soho House for Nerds. I got a new beautiful baby godson, I bought this red 80s looker, and started to learn Blender. Eh, I know, it's not gonna win any awards. What did win awards were some of my films. Now that's a segue. With 88 official selections and 26 wins, my IMDb page is getting downright respectable. I think, I actually have no idea what this means or why it matters. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. Anyway, I did get this dope poster. Lad Bible shared one of my films, which put me over the 10K mark, and I won not one, not two, but three taste awards, which is like the Oscars for food and travel. That's their awards, not mine. See, I knew that the high cholesterol would pay off. All right, let's talk travel. Somehow I found myself exploring Utah for Get Lost Magazine, which ended up launching their new digital platform, and DC discovering amazing nightlife and whatever the hell this is with the smokiest and most fire steak that I've ever had. Then a quick roll the dice for MGM Grand in Vegas, over to the Twin Cities to Fargo it up for 3M, and then down to Guatemala for JetBlue to do a story on their maiden direct flight from New York City, where I explored the colorful Santeria depths of Atalan, the vibrant explosion of life in Chichi Castañango, and of course got my Zacapa rum hat on in Antigua. My last destination was good old Italy, where I did a series of films for the Gold Hotel on the beautiful Ligurian coast. The papers claimed that I was seducing Americans to come visit. Well, I do declare. 
Then I finally made it down to Rome to win at the Motorcycle Film Festival at Cinecittà. While I had my best friends there, uh, we thought we should film episode 2 of Italy in Boca. So, first we rented a 500 year old apartment on the Tiber and planned the ultimate Roman meal from the cookbook series. From there we went to the birthplace of the most Roman pasta, Amatrice. The mayor took us around and brought us to the absolute best purveyors of guanciale and Roman pecorino cheese that's needed to make this ambrosia, and somehow we got the local nonos to share their secrets with us. We then jumped over to Ariccia, which is the home of the poor 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 Keta, where we learned the secrets behind this mouth gift from the gods. Then back in Rome, I met with Epicurean royalty like the only female Roman Michelin star chef, Christina Bowerman, the vanguard behind the Carciofi Giudice at Nona Betta, the oldest restaurant in Rome, La Campana, to learn about the Carciofi Romani, and the charming Michela Di Maria of my favorite restaurant, Due Ladroni, to learn the impossible truths of real Roman cooking. Overloaded with this profound knowledge, we hit up the best specialty shops and fresh markets in Rome before returning to our ancient apartment to cook. Now let me tell you something, cooking in a 500 year old wood burning hearth is not like my Breville toaster back in Queens. Somehow though, we had the courage to invite my Roman family over to dinner and one very special guest, Roto. Roto was the original illustrator of the cookbooks who not only came, but gifted us two new illustrations which are so special to me, I, I honestly don't even know what to say. The entire night was magic. The fact that me, my friends who are complete nobodies, could reach out to all these people and share this common love for food, family, and culture and bring it together just with their own passion is amazing. In fact, it was so special, such a perfect example to me of what life should be, that I ended up proposing to my girlfriend Jackie, which made me very happy. She said yes, by the way. Um, I never thought that 2021 would be such an amazing year. And all I can say is thank you. You all mean everything to me. So here's to 2022, no matter what comes at us. Thank you.